A very good morning to all who have joined. Uh, this is uh, the start of uh, Integrated Wellness uh, Science and Practice Batch 2. My name is Anirban. I'll be moderating the session today. Uh, I'll be introducing my colleagues and my uh, associates who are a part of the program today to all who have joined. Uh, you know, we'll be settling down till 6.15 and uh, then we'll start the actual program with uh, our facilitators coming in. So uh, till then, uh, sit back, relax, and let others join in as we go along. So I'll just play an introductory video of uh, integrated uh, research uh, uh, Center for Research in Integrated Medicine. And this video talks about the story of how sediment, in short, was designed and how it was thought through and how it was brought into existence. <laughs> You can log into our uh, website, uh, sediment.in, and you can check out our Facebook uh, page, sp Facebook group. And then uh, you can also, uh, you know, get in touch with us on our YouTube channel, and you can subscribe to your YouTube channel as we go along. Uh, we will now, this week is Integrated Wellness Science and Practice, IWSP Batch 2. Uh, we conducted the batch one from September 17th to October 17th. And uh, we had a group of 70 participants, including me, who had immensely benefited from the program. And we have a very senior doctor from uh, Apollo Hyderabad, Dr. Shweta Priyadarshini. She has been kind enough to share her experience. And I think uh, if, I, if I'm going to share this with you all, which I have in the past also, uh, you will know how specifically relevant and so how specifically uh, potent this program is for all of you. Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Shweta Priyadarshini and I uh, am a practicing pediatric nephrologist at Apollo Hospital Jubilee Hills in Hyderabad. So basically, I have been associated with the Serimed uh, group since last few months and through them I was introduced to the IWSP. Now when I started this program, I had a fair idea of what this program would have to offer. Basically, like I'm a doctor myself and also have done a, quite a few courses in, uh, you know, wellness, nutrition, lifestyle and all. But then this program was an absolutely, absolute surprise for me. It was packaged in a very different way. In a very, the scientific uh, contents have been presented in a very simple way, such that it makes you want to make certain subtle changes in your lifestyle and hence uh, getting its benefit. So basically, Dr. Sushil Sharma he dissects the why of certain dietary habits in a beautiful way, and of course, Dr. Swami Dayadipa Nandan has a very calm command over yoga, and you you will want to you know after seeing the thing you will want to practice yoga as a daily routine and of course uh, Sushil, dr sushil sharma's talk about uh, stress management in life that is 
so apt for the present circumstances for the present generation it's, it's very very beneficial so this program the beauty of this program is it does not preach it does not tell you that no go ahead and do this go ahead and do these changes to your life and it will benefit you of course it tells you the benefit but it does not dictate you and it makes you want to do those bring those changes within yourself and hence the changes i would say they happen at a very subtle level at its own pace so thank you so much uh, dr sushil sharma dr swami dayadipan nandan ji and uh, anirban ji for this wonderful program i wish you all success and i just hope that it reaches out to as many people as possible and people benefit from it immensely thank you so much so that that was dr uh, shweta speaking about uh, IWSP. Uh, now I take the pleasure of introducing my colleagues and my team members of uh, Integrated Wellness Science and Practice. Um, I will begin by introducing uh, Swami Dayadipananda. He is doctor by profession, and uh, and he is currently the medical superintendent of Ramakrishna Mission Hospital at Haridwar, India. uh he is uh, there very much as a part of our live program today and you will be hearing him shortly speak about his experience and his views about the program uh then we have dr sushil sharma he is md mrcp from united kingdom then he has done his fsc and he is an intervention cardiologist in maryland usa for the last 30 years he is practicing there and he is one of the lead facilitators along with swami dayadipananda for integrated wellness science and practice he is uh, a very astute thinker and he brings his ideas and uh, thoughts about various aspects and it will be delight for you to hear him out during the session today then i have my colleague uh, senior colleague uh, dr subrat chatopadhyay he is a phd uh, from university of british columbia vancouver he is a uh, masters uh, mtech from iit kanpur and he is a btech from iit durgapur and he was the former associate of associate director of cdac center for development of advanced computing bangalore and uh, he is uh, the thought member behind cerimed and i will just bring him in after after this introduction to speak about his experience uh, on on cerimed and on iwsp having been a integral part of these two organizations and these two endeavors in the recent past Uh, my colleague Naresh is a mechanical engineer from Madras University, masters from Bits Pilani and masters from business operations from Bharti Dasan University of Management, India. He is a he is a professional working in the, uh, large multinational organizations, and he is a, a great enthusiast for integrated medicine and himself a a yoga practitioner. In the subsequent sessions, you will be seeing him perform along with Swamiji uh, on the science of yoga. pranayama and uh, meditation and he'll be also uh, you know sp speaking and anchoring some of the important elements of iwsp as you go along and this is me my name is anirban and uh, i i am also an engineer along with dr subroto and naresh and uh, we are an integral part of cerimed who have brought this program iwsp to life and this is the second batch as i said we are doing i am a fulbright scholar and i had a stint at carnegie mellon tech school of business uh, i also worked with uh, corporates all my life uh, multinationals and i decided to give up and i work for a non profit organization to train the specially abled uh, people and cerimed and integrated medicine is also one of my passions we are doing absolutely good when it comes to our time uh now i will have my colleague uh, dr subrato to speak 
on Serimed and uh, how it was incepted and his ideas and views on Serimed. So I will just share the uh, unshare my screen and uh, I will let Dr. Subrato speak. Over to you, Dr. Subrato. Namaste and welcome to this wonderful morning of 17th November in India and wonderful evening of 16th November in the US because most of our participants, many of our participants rather, are from both the continents. Welcome to all in this IWSP Batch 2 program, which is brought to you live today on Sedimet platform. Briefly speaking, as you have seen those videos and little background, Center for Research in Integrated Medicine, it's a very new concept and it's a future for the world. And that's what we believed. And we germinated this idea just about six months back. And with this concept, we started thinking which direction to go. On that ideas, we found research is one aspect, but research is not fruitful until unless there's a practice and those data and this people experience also comes alive. To make all this completely integrated and experiential, we found the best way to do it to integrate the Western ideas of medicines and ancient wisdom of our Indian culture and heritage. And the knowledge has been gathered thousands of years. In that, to make that concept more vibrant and sediment, we introduced every bi-monthly a talk by the eminent personality who practice worldwide integrated medicine. We have personality like Dr. B.M. Hegris speaking to us. We have many other personalities talking about their experience and their practice. We continue to do it. You can, you are welcome to attend any of them. All of you can attend and benefit from those talk. We have this sediment.in website just formed about three, four months back. You are welcome to see that website and see that it's growing resourceful, especially on IWSP section. The Knowledge Center is a beautiful source of getting most of your information, what you learn and will gather and go along. Now coming back to the, my experience of IWSP, I am a batch one participant too. While conducting, I fully involved and participated in the batch one program. I found immensely benefiting my way of starting my day, ending my day, and most of it, even doing all this, I was getting wonderful sleep at night. You learn how important the sleep is at night to make you rejuvenate. Without sleep, you'll be exhausted, you'll never revive your day at all. So this is one of, I have many other experiences to share, I'll do it as I go along, but you'll see that as you do it, whether in the morning session now, or there is an evening session at 6 p.m., you'll enjoy the session, you'll sleep better at night, you'll rejuvenate again for your next day. So happy living, happy rejuvenations, and happy performance. That's what we want to see everyone doing as they participate regularly and enjoy this batch two program of IWSP. Thank you. Thank you all. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subrato. I would uh, now request uh, uh, Swamiji to uh, speak a few words before we hand it over to Doc Dr. Sushil Sharma for his deliberation for today. Namaskar Swamiji. Namaskar. Good morning to all of you, those who are joining us this great morning from India. 
and those who are joining from USA, a very warm good evening. It's always a joy and a privilege to share something good. When we spread the good, it increases. So I thank Serimed from my bottom of heart for giving me this wonderful opportunity sitting in Haridwar, Ramakrishna Mission Sevashram Kankal, a 200 bedded charitable hospital started in the year 1901, that means 120 years back. None other than the direct disciple of Swami Vivekananda by name Swami Kalyanananda. From the banks of the Ganges, Mother Ganga, I convey my love and namaskars to everyone. It's great indeed a great joy and I feel I am blessed to be serving the Ramakrishna Mission Kankal Sevashrama Haridwar for the last 10 years, especially in the field of diabetes and research on diet, research on exercise, yoga, focusing on lifestyle disorders which affect us physically, mentally, emotionally, of course, hinder our spiritual practices. So as a remedy for myself and my close associated people, I have learned and I am proud to say we have learned as a team, Serimed IWSP team, which has benefited all of us immensely. It has made us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually strong and better. So that's the whole purpose of this IWSP, Integrated Wellness Science and Practice. I'm sure those of you all who have joined this morning will remember and enjoy the good practices that we are going to learn based on own individual experiences like Subratoji, like Shweta Priyadarshini ji and Anirban himself and myself and Dr. Sushil. Along with that, I have got more than 300 type 1 diabetic children who are leading a healthy and happy life because of these wonderful practices that we are going to learn. With this brief note and my good wishes and prayers, I hand over to Anirban Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar Swamiji. Thank you very much. Uh, now, with these few words, I will uh, request Dr. Sushil Sharma to take over and take the proceedings forward with his deliberation for today. Okay, thank you, Swamiji, and thank you, Anirban. And welcome to everybody, and welcome to wellness. Let me first of all congratulate the people in India. I have a secret to share with you. Those of you who got up this morning and logged in to come to this wellness program, got about 5.30 in the morning. And if you continue to do that for four weeks, you already have achieved wellness. So congratulations. So we're gonna talk about integrated wellness, science and practice. We're going to talk why you should have wellness. We're going to talk about how you can get wellness. And we're going to talk about what is wellness. We are going to give you all the science behind it. And we're going to give you practical ways of how to benefit from that science. Now, these are called lifestyle diseases. Why they are called lifestyle diseases? Because the way you live, the way you eat, the way you move, the way you sleep and the way you think and the way your habits are to a large extent determine whether you would or you would not get heart disease, cancer, chronic lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes and chronic kidney disease. Now, 
80% of these can either be cured, controlled, or prevented. Which means that if you practice wellness, you have an 80% chance of not getting any of these diseases. And if you do not have these diseases, you have 80% chance of surviving beyond the age of 80. So what is it that you're supposed to do? In the wellness plan, you're supposed to bring in some changes in your diet, some changes in your activity. You have to learn how to manage stress, which is a great component of wellness program that we preach. And you have to transform your habits. So you must be wondering if it's 80% prevention, cure, or control, why doesn't everybody do it? It's very easy. Anybody can do it and get the wellness. Well, here's the problem. That little green thing that you notice in the middle of the screen is your habit center. It's the size of a pea in your brain, pea size, butter ke dane ke barabar. It's called nucleus accumbens. And there's a very large area hanging in the front is a control center, the prefrontal cortex. Now, this small pea-sized habit center is the same center that you share also with animals, exactly same. The only difference is that the humans have a very large developed control center, the prefrontal cortex. And there are communications that constantly go from the control center to the habit center. How well the control center controls the habit center determines what your health habits are. And therein lies the challenge. The challenge is in habit transformation. And we are going to be discussing with you the real science behind habit, how habit forms, what is it that it takes to change the habit, how to transform habits, how to replace bad habits with good habits and have the health benefits. So I, this is my uh, little uh, play on this Zen story. It's uh, somebody had very successful life, made a lot of money, had a lot of uh, wealth and health and everything. And he said, now I can retire happily and I want to be well forever. So he went to a Zen master and he said, okay, can you give me three secrets to wellness that I can practice for the rest of my life and I always want to be well? So the Zen master said, sure, why not? So he gave him the first secret. He said, always pay attention to the present moment. So this man thought, well, that's simple, easy. I can do that. No problem. Uh, I can do this. So let's move on to the second one. The Zen master said, the second secret is pay attention to the present moment. So he was scratching his head. He said, well, it, it almost looks like what is said in the first secret. So how is it any different? But anyway, so he's a Zen master. So let me listen to him. So he said, master, give me the third secret. He said, the third secret is pay attention to the present moment. And then he was thinking, why is it that the Zen master is saying what he's saying? Because at any given time, our attention is divided in three components. It's in the present moment, but at the same time, it's also in the past. And it's also in the future. Not being always in the present moment is the single most important reason for stress. The guilt of the past, which is dead, and the fear of the future, which is unborn, can ruin your wellness. So always be present in the present moment and that's all I want you to do throughout the program. If you're just present, just present, everything will come to you automatically. And at the end of four weeks, you will feel well. All I want you to do is be like a sponge. Just sit there like a sponge and soak up like a sponge. Let anything that's coming to you not conflict with the content of your mind let it not conflict with what you already know and why you should not know this. Give it space. Let it sit side by side with all your preconceived notions and let it sit there and it will expand and will transform you. 
So what is your preference? Do you want to continue to take these medications for blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, heart disease, stroke, lung disease, cancer? Or do you want to go ahead and have procedures, surgeries, bypass operations, endarterectomies, peripheral vascular surgery, or surgeries for cancers? Or would you rather prevent all this when you know that by practicing integrated wellness science and practice, I already told you there's an 80% chance that you can get rid of these procedures, you can get rid of these pills. So you must be wondering, why do people not do it? So I'm just now giving you a glimpse of the very first practice, which to me is the most important practice in the program. If you're able to convince yourself at a given time in the morning and a given time in the evening to spend two minutes to rejuvenate yourself, all you're doing in that time is basically sitting with your eyes closed practicing stillness, silence, and solitude. And in those two minutes, thoughts will come to your mind. Thoughts will go away from the mind. Don't invite them. Don't resist them. Watch them come. Watch them go. And you stay focused on your breath. Stay, stay with your breath. Feel your breath going in. Feel your breath going out. If you do that for two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening, you will see profound changes throughout the day. And then two minutes will expand to three, to four, to five, and then 10 and 20. And then you realized that your self-rejuvenation practice has now graduated to meditation. And meditation is the best way to attain wellness in life. I will stick my neck out and say that the 20th century belonged to medications the 21st century will belong to meditation. But it's difficult to graduate to meditation and therefore this practice is, in my opinion, a very simple, straightforward practice that will transform your health. In a subtle way, without you knowing it, if you're practicing it, you're also bringing in tremendous discipline in your life. If you have managed to set aside everything else in your life and give yourself two minutes, to rejuvenate in the morning, two minutes in the evening, and make everything else secondary to that, you have already taken the first step towards wellness. Wellness will be a natural byproduct of this practice without you knowing it that you're practicing wellness. So before I go further, because a lot of science to discuss, I would like us to actually experience this together. Remember, we're gonna to sit together in silence, stillness, and solitude. We're gonna let thoughts come in, thoughts go. We're just keep, gonna keep focused on breath in and breath out for two minutes. And I'm gonna ask Anirbanji to time it and let's all do it together. Anirbanji, you're ready? Yes, sir. I'm let me know when the time begins. Yes, uh, the time begins now. Okay.
it's time doctor thank you so congratulations you just did the very first practice from this program that uh, you will learn and uh, as i said this is the most profound practice it seems like it's the simplest easiest thing to do but if you could stick to it 2 minutes in the morning 2 minutes in the evening you will see profound changes in your wellness because you have indirectly and unconsciously started training your mind and controlling your mind and people that did the IWSP1 batch a lot of them are continuing to do it and they all batch together on whatsapp and uh, send signals to each other to do it together with evening and morning and uh, you can join them too and that'll be great okay so let's begin first of all when you start wellness and you end your four weeks of wellness or eight weeks of wellness you want to know did it help me or not so all of you have to know at least seven numbers whoever is your physician when you go to him tell him please write on a piece of paper for me what is my blood pressure what is my systolic and diastolic blood pressure what is my bmi which is weight divided by surface area what is my total cholesterol what is my waist circumference in the middle at the navel level what's my hdl good cholesterol level what is my blood sugar and my hemoglobin a1c and what's ldl and bad cholesterol and then as you practice this over a period of time you're going to see these numbers changing changing for good and that will be an incentive for you to continue to practice wellness so that you continue to improve these numbers and avoid the lifestyle diseases so you, this will be posted on the iwsp uh, to uh, whatsapp you can always go back to your physician and make sure you know these numbers we are going to tell you the practices and you're going to use scientifically proven smart goal technique it is not okay to just have a goal i am going to be well that is not a goal we will make specific small goals you will create a way to measure the goal you'll make sure that's attainable in the time frame that you have in mind make sure it's realistic it doesn't push you to do something completely unnatural and it's time bound in the specific time that goal will be achieved so you'll make small goals in diet small goals in activity small in sleep small in stress small in habit and you'll see how the transformation happens over a period of time and we're going to discuss this in detail as we go along the program now let's understand the biology of wellness these three may be completely new concepts to you but most of our biology is determined by these three the endothelial integrity is what determines your vascular health circadian rhythm is what determines how you sleep and wake how you rest and relax how you activate and deactivate and how what effect it has on your metabolism your neuroendocrine system and your digestion and your sleep and the mental resilience determines whether a given situation will cause you stress or not whether a given situation is going to make you secrete those hormones and those neurotransmitters in your brain that eventually give you illness or not if you look at your body there's blood vessel everywhere you you cut your finger it bleeds you cut your toe it bleeds because there's a vast network of blood vessels that goes all over your body and they all are mishmashing and connecting with each other so if you actually cut any of these big vessel small vessel and look at it in a transsectional view there's a one cell lining right in the middle here is called endothelium this one cell lining if this lining is healthy you are healthy if this lining is unhealthy you are unhealthy and as you can see all this blood is flowing in it so if this blood has good healthy things flowing in it the endothelium stays healthy but if something flowing in this blood is unhealthy you are going to be unhealthy if there is damage to this endothelium that is what starts the process of depositing the cholesterol plaques and that is what blocks these arteries and that is how you end up getting a stroke a blockage in the artery or a heart attack so how does endothelium get damaged it gets damaged by oxidative stress just like your mind gets a stress your endothelium also gets stressed and what stresses the endothelium a poor diet 
high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, inactivity, and stress. So I'm going to tell you how to reduce the oxidative stress so that you do not damage your endothelium, you repair your endothelium, you have good circulation all over your body, and you feel healthy. We will also help you understand circadian rhythm. To just give you an idea of what circadian rhythm is, in your eyes, there is your retina that perceives sun ray and tells your mind it's daytime. It sees the darkness or the moon and it tells you it's nighttime. It sends that signal to a nucleus called suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is connected to your pineal body, which we Indians call the third eye. And that secretes a hormone. So if it perceives that there is darkness, it secretes melatonin and you go to sleep. And if it perceives sunlight, it stops producing melatonin and you wake up. And that is the sleep-wake cycle that you have every day. Similarly, related to that also is an activity and rest cycle. Similarly, there's a feeding and a fasting cycle. So if you're sleeping and waking at different times, your activity and rest is unbalanced at different times, your feeding and fasting is different, you are sending confusing signals to your circadian center. And what happens if you do that? Well, this center also is connected to your peripheral centers. Like there's a clock in your brain, which tells you day and night. There's a clock in your heart, your liver, your pancreas, your body tissues, your stomach, your intestine. They all have their own rhythms and they know when you eat, when you stop eating, when you move, and therefore the heart anticipates I have to beat faster. Your liver knows when the food is coming, when food's not coming. And if you have made all those things erratic, what have you gotten? You have gotten a circadian rhythm misalignment. Your insulin sensitivity, sensitivity is reduced, your cortisol levels go up, you gain weight, you become obese, and you develop metabolic syndrome. So it's very important to know the balance and we'll teach you how to balance sleep with being awake, exercise with recovery, eating with fasting, and stress with relaxation. Both sides have to be balanced. And when they're balanced, you have optimal circadian alignment, and then all your body organs function appropriately and you get wellness. The third component you need to understand is mental resilience. What is mental resilience? Resilience is the ability to adapt successfully, bounce back in the face of stress and adversity. You will always have stress in your life. You will always have failures in your life. You will always have tragedies in your life. How quickly, how effectively you bounce back from that, that is what is called resilience. You have to bounce back like a slinky. This was the very first study from Mind Body Institute from Harvard, which actually looked at resilience practices, relaxation practices. And by the way, we're going to discuss all of them and more. And they wanted to check and see, is this really science about this meditation, yoga, pranayama, uh, self-rejuvenation time, all these things. Does it make sense or is it all uh, kind of uh, for the scriptures only? So when they did resilience practice, what they did is they taught those people mindfulness-based re stress relaxation. And they taught that for eight weeks to those people and then encouraged them to stay connected and practice. Then over a period of time, a couple of years, three years, they looked at what was their chances of having problems compared to those who were matched individuals who were not practicing. So they found out that those who had relaxation response and resilience practice had 43% less chance of getting interventions, 40% less chance of going to the doctors, 50% less chance of getting CT scans, ultrasounds, and x-rays, 40% less chance of spending money on getting their labs tested because their sugar is high or their uh, uh, cholesterol is high, 20% less procedures, and 50% less emergency room visits. So you could cut your all healthcare expenditure by 40 to 50% just by knowing how to manage stress, how to be resilient, 
and how to relax. And you will be listening and practicing together with us for four weeks, all those beautiful practices of relaxation. So how do we do all this? We do it, we make you dash to wellness in four weeks. How do we dash you to wellness? We improve your diet, we increase your activity, we reduce your stress, and we replace unhealthy habits with healthy habits. On the food side, we will learn what are the best kind of foods that you eat? What are antioxidants? What do they do? How free radicals harm the brain cells, cardiovascular risk, how they cause cancer, and how getting these beautiful, colorful plants as part of your diet and getting antioxidants, beta carotene, lutein, lycopene, selenium, vitamins from this, and this antioxidant rich blood flowing in your arteries, rejuvenating your endothelium, preventing damage to your arteries, reversing your heart disease and your stroke and your cancer and your blood pressure and your diabetes and your obesity and your cholesterol. You will discuss all that in the section on diet, which will go on for three full sessions. This is a study that looked at across the board, what is the incidence of blood pressure, lung disease, diabetes, smoking, overweight, cholesterol elevation in people based on their activity. So less than five meds is people who are mostly sedentary. So if you don't exercise at all, you have much higher incidence of getting this problem. And if you exercise adequately, your incidence goes down. So we are gonna be discussing all this and recommending different practices. In fact, CDC director, Dr. Frieden said, the closest thing we have to a wonder drug is physical activity. You will be learning the benefits and the science of walking, how 7,500 steps of walk a day can reduce your chance of getting a cancer, heart attack, or stroke by 25%. You'll be practicing yoga and seeing what are the benefits of yoga on your health, meditation, pranayama. And you'll also discover benefits of other physical activities such as running, brisk walking on a treadmill or elliptical. We will get you through a beautiful program on two sessions on understanding the underlying basis of stress. All of you have seen, if you look at all the phenomena that are happening around you, they have two things in common. And you see that on a daily basis. If that comes in your awareness and becomes your conscious practice to see that around you and imbibe that and keep that in, you are on your way to stress prevention. Impermanence, like the footsteps in the sand on the beach. If you go there tomorrow morning, they'll not be there. Everything is impermanent. Everything that you're clinging to has to go. Interdependence, if you remove one stone from this beautiful formation, the whole scaffolding is gonna fall apart. And this is what tells you that everything in this world, everywhere, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, between human beings, animals, plants, environment, stars, galaxies, everything is interdependent. And if somehow this impermanence and interdependence becomes in your awareness as part of a daily practice, you realize that your acceptance and letting go increases, your loving and serving increases, and that is the sure shot way of reducing stress. Once you know these steps are not gonna be there, you accept that as a fact and you let go. Once you know that each link of the scaffolding is as important as any other link in this because you remove one stone and the whole scaffolding will fall away. The only way you can live peacefully and happily is if you love and serve each one of this link. We'll take you through this group of practices which have scientific basis behind it, and we're gonna discuss all that in detail. There are published studies that say that if you practice gratitude, self-compassion, and self-rejuvenation time that we did, it improves your stress level. There are multiple studies that determine that if you do yoga, pranayama, meditation on a regular basis, you reduce your stress. And there are multiple studies that we'll discuss with you which suggests that if you do volunteering or connect with people socially and emotionally 
and belong to institutions or uh, uh, religious organizations or uh, volunteering organizations, your stress goes down. And we'll give you details of each one of them and the science behind each one of them. And you can then make them, all of them part of your life, some of them part of your life, whatever you like, whatever you want to take, you can take. We will tell you scientific methods of how to change your habits. Some of you may have seen this book. To me, this is a beautiful book. Those of you who like to read should like to, to read this, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. And those that don't want to read, don't have to read because I will be delving into this in great detail when I discuss the scientific session on how to change habits. He is the one who created this golden rule, which is you can't extinguish a bad habit. You can only change it. So how do you get rid of bad habits? You get rid of bad habits by substituting good habits. And we will discuss that in detail and give you a methodology of how to change your habits. He is the one who discovered this habit loop. The loop is cue, routine, and reward. There's something that reminds you to do something, for example, you get a phone call from a friend who drinks. So you know what the routine is now. You're gonna go with him and you're gonna drink. And when you're gonna drink, what's gonna happen? You're gonna be rewarded. You'll feel good. And then it goes on and on and now it's become a habit. So how do you change the habit? You don't change the cue. Your mind will tell you I'm bored, I need some company. Your mind will only be happy if it gets a reward. So what do you change? You change the routine. Then you start experimenting with different routines and seeing which routine can satisfy your mind when it's getting bored and give you the reward that it needs. And you realize after a period of time that you replace the habit. So we're gonna create a lot of loops for that for different habits, but I just gave you one example. The habit change requires, as I said, once you become aware of your habits, you will identify your triggers. You'll know how to disrupt them. You'll understand how to replace good habits with bad habits, good habits for bad habits. And we'll make it simple. We'll persist on it and you'll think long-term once we give you a roadmap of that. So you're gonna create new habits. You already decided today, for example, you created a new habit of doing rejuvenation time, self rejuvenation time, two minutes in the morning and two minutes in the evening. What is it gonna do? It is going to be substituted in your mind and you will realize how many old habits you will replace of not waking up in time, not doing things in time, procrastination, indiscipline, all that is gonna change just by clinging to this for four weeks. So those of you who will be with us will learn to know a lot and uh, will be doing this two minute practice with us. We'll be talking about improving our diet, increasing our activity, reducing our stress, healthy habits. Just sit there and relax, have fun. It's all gonna be joy. It's all gonna be fun. You just have to sit there and soak up like a sponge. And remember, if you love and serve and you connect and belong, you get all the benefits of wellness. And that is exactly what we're doing right now. I love doing what I'm doing. I love doing this wellness. And it's great if I get to serve you, I'm serving myself and benefiting. It's beautiful that I got an opportunity to connect with you because you are logged in. And this connectivity is going to create a bond. And we're all going to do, do this journey together. And we're all going to belong to this IWSP for the next four weeks and have fun together. Remember what you plant today, you will harvest tomorrow. So the choice is in your hands. What kind of seeds you implant, you plant in your brain is going to determine what kind of thoughts you generate. What kind of habits you're gonna put in your life is gonna determine what kind of wellness you're gonna have. Remember, you have to have a goal and plan. A goal without a plan is just a wish. So I look forward to being with you for the next four weeks and doing this journey together and discuss all these things that we discuss in detail. And then also do yoga, dhyana, pranayama together. And in four weeks, we're all gonna be well. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharma.
uh i think it was a fantastic talk like always because this is my second program and i have been with you in the first one and uh, and, and the way in which uh, you explain it is so lucid and so uh, so very invigorating for people to soak up like as you said about you know soaking up the sponge uh, like a sponge so um, i think uh, one of the questions which i asked you last time also and I'm, and this is a question which i think people should also know that uh, what what made you and swamiji to make this program free of cost and for everybody uh is going to be the question again for the benefit of the people who are a part of the program today what is the so, thought so this is basically you know swanta sukhaya ragunath gatha so basically this is i wanted to be benefited by it i liked to transition to wellness as i told you i practiced interventional cardiology for 30 years i implanted stents in every artery in the body in renal arteries peripheral arteries coronary arteries day in day out saw patients with heart attack stroke debilitation all kind of endothelial damage inside the arteries i saw for 30 years and i realized that putting in stents doing bypasses it's bandaid you can fix it one place and the next thing place breaks so what is it that you can do to prevent this and wellness and integrated wellness is what came to my mind and i decided to start that in my own life for four years i practiced that because i also had the beginning of the heart disease my family history is such my father had heart attack my mother had heart attack my brother had heart attack and there's a very high likelihood that i have a heart attack so i thought why not change that then we came up with this idea that i visited haridwar and i went there with swami ji and i said swami ji this is what i have in mind he says come on we'll do it together so every day me and swami ji we did it for four weeks together every morning 5 o'clock in the morning we used to get on bike go to the bank of ganges beautiful breeze sunrise see hills on the one side and sit on the bank of ganges and do yoga dhyana pranayama for an hour and a half come back have a breakfast together lunch dinner and then do the program in the evening stay active all day volunteer in the hospital for one month so we did that for one month and we both checked our numbers cholesterol blood pressure everything before and after and we were amazed that over and above what i already had pretty good numbers i improved them another 20% so this experiment that i did with swami ji and i benefited so much from it and honestly swami ji is the inspiration behind this program then he encouraged me and he said why not put this together as a program i said okay we'll do it and then one thing led to the other and then came the iwsp batch one we hooked up with anirban ji subrata ji and naresh ji and we did it all together and we realized that we we five of us benefited more and then 67 people that joined us they benefited and then it all started and i thought well this is great and the more i do i benefit and the more we do together we benefit then why not share and benefit so it's just been a joy and a fun and and i love to do it and uh, i'm sure you will too and uh, and then you'll bring in your family you'll bring in your friend and we're all going to do it together it's all about having fun together living healthy eating healthy staying active and just enjoy oh that's superb uh, uh, dr sharma i think uh and the manner in which uh, we went through uh, you know the batch one and uh, the manner in which we have gathered this uh you know set of people who continue to be with us in 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 the form of the alumni to with whom we keep meeting every fortnight after the even if the batch one is over and i'm sure we are going to do the same thing with this batch also and going forward we'll create a community we'll create a movement we'll create a uh you know a, a, a some kind of a force towards uh a wellness a society which is well which is healthy uh which is wealthy and which is performing and that's what is the aim of uh, uh you know integrated wellness science and practice so now uh, we have a question from uh, dr venugopal and he asks that what is, what is good habits and what is bad habits it is highly individualized and perception can you clarify yeah so good question so before i go to that yeah I, again going back on the theme that anirban just said what came to my mind is is the, is the magnetic pull so it it's it's bidirectional so what has happened now is that the alumni from the previous batch they don't want to leave us and we don't want them to leave us 
So this is this is the beauty of it, I think, and we'll have the same bond with the second batch, and, and, and that's what gives us the joy. So good habits, bad habits, we're gonna discuss that in detail. Uh, a good habit is what your mind tells you is a good habit, and a bad habit is what your mind tells you is a bad habit. Because anything and everything that you're going to do, you're going to do what your mind tells you. And your mind will tell you at different times in a different way, what is good for you, what is not good for you, what is bad for you, what is not bad for you. At the end of the day, your mind is going to be your guide. And this mind is going to absorb like a sponge what we will talk about. It's going to be attentive as we talked about in the Zen story. And it's gonna let these things sit side by side in your mind and let your mind decide what I heard and what I'm learning. Is that the right thing? Or what I do, or I have been doing, is the right thing. And then let your mind make the determination and tell you what is right, what is wrong, and let your mind then give you the power and strength to practice what your mind tells you is right or wrong. Very nice. Uh, Prof. Sharma, I think uh, you encapsulated the question uh, by by giving a very uh, you know balanced view in terms of what are good habits and what are bad habits. Uh, I think uh, when I look at uh, uh, habits, uh, the one point which comes very clearly out, which you will, I'm sure, uh, which you will for sure dwell much more in detail, uh, that it's one of the most difficult things to actually come over a habit, and that is what is uh, I would say one of the challenge areas of towards wellness because if I'm used to doing certain things for a very long period in time, I'll continue doing it. So that is where I think your inputs on those sessions will you know, make me think. It has made me think. I'm sure it will make everybody think who have, whoever becomes a part of the program and attends all the 12 sessions. So uh, there was a question asked, can we record the program? I think uh, there is no point in recording because uh, what we are going to do is that we're going to have a rerun of this program at 6 p.m. today, India time, and at 7.30 a.m. in U.S. time. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, today it is Monday uh, in U.S., so you will have in Tuesday morning uh, at 7.30 a.m. For India, it is going to be today evening, Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. The same program will be rerun, and in case any one of you are missing or any one of your friends are missing, they can be a part of the program in the evening. So this was based on a feedback what we had in the last session where people had told us that many of them cannot uh, do the morning program because they have to go to work or you know <laughs> their habits are overpowering them or <laughs> anything of that kind. So we have kept the provision of an evening program also. So this is for everybody's information. So now uh, uh, we would keep a track of the questions. I'll request Naresh to keep a track of the questions and we'll take it up a little later on. I will, it is seven o'clock and as per the agenda, uh, I will hand it over to Swamiji to take his part of the deliberation forward, which is going to speak about uh, yoga, dhyana and pranayama and the science and the practice behind it. That is a theme for Swamiji. So I'll hand it over to Swamiji. Thank you again, Dr. Sushil. Namaskar. <clears throat> Anir Burn, uh, can I have sir. my PPT? Yes, sir. I'm sharing it. Before I go and talk about the science of yoga, let us do one small uh, kriya, which can make us to experience something which is good, vibrant within us, not outside. Can all of us, wherever we are, sit straight in a comfortable position? If you are sitting for a long time, just relax yourself. Sthira Sukha Asanam, close your eyes, close your ears, make a humming sound. Mm. I think all of you are following. You are closing your eyes, you are closing your ears. Then making a humming sound. 
This is called as Bhastrika Pranayama. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure and joy to share with all of you what I have learned in my life which has made me physically, mentally, emotionally, of course spiritually strong which has made me feel good about myself which has made me to do good things and carry forward those good things in one word if you want to learn what is yoga yoga is a way of life jivan paddhati subhe se leke raat tak hum alag alag काम करते हैं खाने से लेके ब्रीदिंग करने से लेके ब्रीदिंग करने से लेके सोने से लेके अलग अलग एक्टिविटी करते हैं सो द वेरियस एक्टिविटीज वे आर ऑल परफॉर्मिंग फ्रॉम मॉर्निंग टू इवनिंग एंड फ्रॉम नाइट ऑनवर्ड्स वी गो एंड टेक रेस्ट सो दैट ऑल कम्स इन अवर वे ऑफ लाइफ yoga if it becomes your way of life you can have the best of best so that's what yoga means for me how i learned how i am practicing i as a student right from my school days had a good opportunity to learn yoga asana and pranayama because i studied in a residential school and i had a great privilege by the blessings of the lord to be trained in a role model school so right from my school days right from my childhood i had the opportunity to practice yoga pranayama and meditation that inspired me to take up the life of a monk by renouncing everything father mother brother and everything and dedicate my life to the service of humanity after completing my mbbs when i met a monk of ramakrishna mission when i read the life and messages of swami vivekananda which inspired me to listen to the words of swami vivekananda renunciation and service are the twin ideals for the regeneration of modern india india means nothing but we the citizens of india we the individuals if we practice this ideal as taught by swami vivekananda renunciation and service what is renunciation giving up the lower for the sake of higher giving up my family and embracing the whole world as one family vasudaiva kutumbakam what is service doing the work not for myself for not for my benefits but the benefits of the all why should i do as mahatma gandhi said we live the best when we live in others apna jeevan ka ati adbhut kshan aapko paana hai to aapko sabke sath ek hona padega that's what spirituality means from iness to weness where there is i there is illness where there is we there is wellness replace the word i with we illness to wellness a journey from illness to wellness 
a journey from I-ness to V-ness. So that's what I realized after completing my MBBS from a medical college in Karnataka and took up the life of a monk, joined at Ramakrishna Mission, Belgaum. Then after my probationary training at Belurmat headquarters, joined the Holy Order Ramakrishna Mission and I am serving here with the attitude of Shiva Bhave Jiva Seva as taught by Swami Vivekananda. What is that Shiva Bhave Jiva Seva? Serving the living God in man. Why I am talking all about this philosophy? Swami Vivekananda himself tells. I am sure if a man commits thousand mistakes with an ideal, he would have committed 50,000 mistakes without an ideal or a philosophy for life. So, we should have a philosophy for life. We should have an ideal for our life, which can make us to less and less commit mistakes. So, the more uh, less and less, the less and less mistakes we commit, the more better we become. So, that's what our evolution means. Life is nothing but the evolution of a being under the circumstances tending to press it down again and again. All our bad habits try to press us down and down. But if you want to evolve really in life, you should come up with rig vigor and strength to practice the good habits. That's what life means. This is again taught by Swami Vivekananda. So when the question was asked, what is good habit and how to replace? Good habit is that which makes you physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually strong. Good is that which is beneficial for all. So this is what yoga means for me. Then please now let me tell, let me ask you, do you agree with me? We all should be always keep all these things in mind and breathe every moment. If you agree, let me now go and talk what are the health benefits of yoga which I have been practicing since from my childhood. Then I joined Ramakrishna Mission Belgaum. There I had a good opportunity to learn more about yoga and pranayama. Then I was in training center Belomad Kolkata. There I learned more about yoga and pranayama. Of course, focusing on japa and meditation of the Ramakrishna Mission tradition. As taught by our spiritual teachers, Mantra Diksha Gurus, Sanyasha Gurus. That I will talk to you about later. Which is my personal journey from a doctor to a monkhood. Then, after coming to Haridwar, I associated myself with a diabetic family, type 1 diabetic children. I had a passion to serve because I had the mantra of Swami Vivekananda. They alone live who live for others, the rest are more dead than alive. You really live when you live for others. Again, the message of Swami Vivekananda inspired me to learn more about yoga and practice the life of service, renunciation and service, not for me but for others, not I but we. Then I went on meeting great teachers who practice wellness, who preach wellness. Things which are ta taught or preached after practicing have an immense effect. There is a great talk by Swami Ranganathananda, who is the 13th president of Ramakrishna Mutt and Mission, the power of the spoken word. When you practice and tell others, it has a lot of effect, impact. So, when I learned more about wellness, by great national and international acclaimed teachers, I got more and more benefit, which benefited the type 1 diabetic children even. A type 1 diabetic children who used to take 60 units per day insulin, now requiring 30 units per day. 
that means insulin requirement has come down tangibly that is the health benefit of yoga they are feeling happy they say type 1 diabetes is blessings in disguise we see children with diabetes going to depression there is no therapy there is no solution in the allopathy because it's just physical science that's where yoga helps I have my known friends and relatives who were diagnosed with borderline diabetes, hypertension and cholesterol after practicing wellness programs, they are back to their normal health. I have my close associate colleagues who had severe low backache and it was adversely affecting their routine even after consulting so many orthopedic and spinal docs uh, specialists the pain was not relieved because those people gave only the physical signs and its a solution. But they had something higher problem. It, it was affecting their mind. It was affecting their emotions. It was affecting their spiritual being. That was solved, resolved by the wellness program. I had some people who had severe anxiety and depression. Alienation from the surrounding is the root cause for all sorts of anxiety and depressions. They used to live alone. They never thought of others. We did a trial and they got the benefit. Few people had bad small habits like smoking and all. They gave up smoking because they started enjoying wellness program. And chronic health disorders got improved as mentioned rightly by Dr. Sushil Sharma, what measures gets managed. Eyes cannot see what mind doesn't know. So until and unless your mind is not knowing what is the ideal weight of your body, what is the ideal food, what is the ideal way of life, you will not be able to practice. You will not be able to see things around you. Bhagwan ne sab kuch humko dega diya hai. Uska dekhne ka shamata humko develop karna hai. God has given everything to us. Only we should learn to look around and see how lucky we are. That's what wellness program does. And if you practice, you, I am sure all of you will have all these health benefits. And this we are practicing together with doctors, with students, with monks and with my diabetic children. Health benefits of pranayama, again wonderful, wonderful. Just one simple brahmri we practiced and saw how it made us to relax ourselves. We are feeling fresh. It makes you increase your mindfulness. Usually, when we sit for some time and our mind slowly goes down, we become more energetic. And studies have shown it has reduced the high blood pressure. Studies have shown it has improved lung capacity. Studies have shown it has improved the cognitive performances. And it has also shown in some studies in few people, the craving for bad habits had disappeared. So, pranayama has got immense benefits. If you ask me, the yogasana and pranayama, 20% benefits for the, from the physical postures, asanas that we do. But 80% benefit is from pranayama. It's my experience. It is the experience of my teachers through whom I learned. And it is the experience of my colleagues who are practicing with me. So, if you practice Yogasana Pranayama, you will all be benefiting by these wonderful benefits. And meditation, what is meditation? When I am talking to you, it's a dialogue. When I talk to myself, it's a monologue. If I talk to my real self, which is God, Ishwar, Allah, Buddha, Jesus, that is prayer. Talking to yourself, your real self. What is that real self? We will know in our next talk. If you talk to God, maybe Ishwar, Allah, Jesus, Buddha, Rama, Krishna, Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, Hanuman, Mother Kali, Durga. So that is prayer. Go and 
talk to your own Lord. Oh Lord, I am your divine child. Please bless me. Please give me health, wealth and good mind to do good things. So, when you do it intense, intense prayer is nothing but meditation. Becoming one with your real self. Being with God. Being with all that is good and positive. That is meditation. If you do that, yad bhavam tad bhavati. Whatever you think, you become. So, what is meditation? Being with your real self, which is sat chit ananda, shivoham, shivoham, our real nature. Bhagavan. Bhagavan is one who is embodiment of all that is good. The highest energy, which can be neither created nor destroyed. So, if you do that, you will have wonderful benefits as the slide is showing. And you will become a yoga expert if you attend this four weeks course with us in which we will be learning what so far Dr. Sushil Sharmaji has spoken added with yoga asana, pranayama and all these things will be taught to you bit by bit thoda thoda karke pura hum sikhayenge anulom ilom brahmri bhastrika kapal bati udgita sarala pranayam antah pranayam bahya pranayam ujjay pranayam what is the uh, benefits of this doing ayura arogya ruddhi in one word ayu means your longevity will increase ayu Arogya, your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health will be better. And the asanas, Surya Namaskara, Yogic Jogging, Sukshma Vayamas, Mandukasana, Shalabhasana, Ustrasana, Gomukasana, Vakrasana, Uthanapadasana, Sarvangasana, Halasana, Shalabhasana, Dhanurasana, all these things will be taught to you in detail, slowly, slowly. Koi hadabadi nahi hai, aram se, masti me, anand me, hum sab log milke karenge. There is something called as nodically, kedically, madically. There is something called as we learn by hearing, listening. We learn by looking and we learn by practicing. So, you will be doing all this with us. Not uh, much time, I have given a very brief introduction. What is the highest benefit of yoga? Ayura Arogya, your longevity will increase, your health will be better and you will feel happy. You will live a meaningful, joyful, anand ka jivan seekna hai. Jivan ka paddhati seekna hai, vahi hum sab log milke karing. We will all be learning this wonderful technique for a joyful blissful life i request all my participants who have joined this morning to do all this with four weeks 90 minutes per session which will be told more in detail by nirbanji and i request please go ahead and extend the hand of service help your friends and relatives to join this program so we will keep exceptionally open to all of those who will join through your reference. Namaskar over to Anirban. So, uh, we have some questions, uh, uh, doctor, both the doctors. Uh, so, we'll take it up. We have only nine minutes to go. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, the first question from Dr. Venu Kopal, uh, this was already asked and answered. Uh, uh, Dr. Sushil has given an answer as well. Um, another question from Ramkant. Uh, my son is in US. Can I advise him now to join the session at 6 p.m.? Yes, of course. Why not? Please uh, share that uh, Google form link. We still kept it open. We were about to close yesterday, but both the doctors told let us keep it open for a few more hours. So please uh, share that Google form to him so that let him fill, we will get all his contact details so that the communication will become easy. Also to all the participants, um, predominantly all our communications are going to be uh, through WhatsApp group. So we have sent out an email to all of you with the link where you can click and join the WhatsApp group. 
If you do not have the habit of using WhatsApp, we request you to use it for next one, one month until the program gets over so that it will become easy for us to organize and all the communication through will be in one. So request all of you to WhatsApp uh, group if you have not done already. Um, so there is another uh, question regarding recording. Uh, recording. Uh, uh, so please do not record it. Uh, we have done a lot of deliberations on this. Um, you may not be able to do that even otherwise. Also, uh, sharing the PPT also uh, will not be efficient. Uh, it is not like there is no reason why we should not share, but it will not be efficient. That's the reason we moved the session both in the morning and the same thing will be re-telecasted in the evening along with the live question and answer session again in the evening for India time. For two reasons we have done it. One is for convenient of people who live in different continent. Second one is if somebody thinks that they want to re- uh, you know, look at the practice or sessions. You got an another opportunity on the same day so that you can do that. But the program is designed in such a way that it is, you have to see, like uh, Swamiji finally said, you have to see, you have to practice it with us. So only then it will be more efficient. That is the reason this is uh, done. Yeah, so uh, this question is to Dr. Sushil. Uh, please, uh, this is from Mithun, uh, please once again explain those seven numbers and their normal values, uh, Dr. Sushil. It will be uh, part of another session as we go along. So right now there's not much time. Uh, blood pressure, sugar, cholesterol, BMI, waist circumference, we'll be discussing all that in detail uh, in, in the subsequent sessions. Uh, what we can do is we can put the slide on the WhatsApp on Irvanji, and then you can take it to your personal physician who has all the numbers on you and he can fill up that for you and give you uh, seven numbers to keep a log on. Sure. So uh, put this uh, slide uh, uh, in the in our WhatsApp uh, group. So um, how will I log into the tomorrow session? Um, so, every day a new link will be created. The same link will be used both as well as evening session. And the link will be put in our WhatsApp group. So, today it is a, ba it's a batch to session one. And tomorrow session, I mean that is day after tomorrow session, you will have batch to session two and session three, session four with the date mentioned in that. So WhatsApp is the best way where you can track, uh, sir. Can you send the WhatsApp link? I will do it um, uh, right away. Uh, if there is anybody has got any other question, please uh, put it. Okay. Yeah, Raj, I think uh, that's it about the questions. Uh, so we have got another five minutes. Yes, uh, Anirban. Also, there is a uh, that any other form to be filled up other than this uh, BMI, like a PWS form or anything else to be done. This check that is also required, or where when the forms yeah. will be distributed. Yes, those forms will be sending in the WhatsApp group. That's why uh, you know everybody is requested to be on WhatsApp at least for this month, so that we can have a seamless communication. And we'll be sending these forms for people to fill up, uh, you know, maximize the fill up. Uh, we know that 100% we will never get, but still we request everybody to fill up because that enables us and you also to keep a track of how you are progressing before and after the program. So today, by today evening or maximum by tomorrow morning, you'll have the forms on WhatsApp. Yeah, but if you have time now, possibly uh, Dr. Sharma can explain the other forms, what are those forms about and what they have to do in this? Before I go on that, I see two more questions. So one is, will the evening session be the same as the morning session? That's a question. The answer is yes, it's, uh, it's, it's exactly the same session. Uh, we come back in question answer live. So the only difference is gonna be the question answers are gonna be different. 
And there is another question, what size room do we need to do yoga? It's whatever you think is comfortable for you to stand, lie down, move, uh, and do all the postures. Uh, that should be the size of the room. So coming to the forms, it's optional, first of all. The reason we wanted you to do the form is for two reasons. Number one is, as I said, what gets measured gets managed. So these two forms will have all these 17 practices that you learn over the next, or 15 practices over the next uh, four weeks. And you can list them in one way and see what you're practicing now. And as you advance, how much are you advancing further? The second form is a perceived wellness score. So how you perceive your wellness, it has questionnaire that you fill up and you keep a log of that. And we had this form sent to all the 70 participants in IWSP and they were also kind enough to fill up a post form and we saw the difference and you will see the difference yourself. So it's important to also measure your wellness objectively, how you feel about yourself before and how you feel after you completed four weeks. So it's for your benefit for you to know because once you see the change, you'll feel the change, you see it in the numbers, they'll motivate you to continue to do that for the rest of your life. And that's our aim and goal and objective. Anirban? Yes, sir. So uh, I think uh, we will, uh, there are more or less we have covered all the questions. So we will close today's session. We have got another two minutes to go. I've got some announcements to make and then with that, uh, we'll close today's session. So our uh, own mind is our friend and our own mind is our enemy, says Bhagavad Gita. Krishna Paramatma keeping Arjuna in front of him, he gave a message to humanity. Your own mind is your friend and your own mind is your enemy. Which is your own mind, which is friend, which is a trained mind. Untrained mind is enemy. So that is the purpose of this program, IWSP, training the mind to do good habits. That was my closing note, over to Nirban. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, I think uh, we mentioned this. This is for another information for everybody. That we start, uh, we have our next session on 19th November. Uh, we will have, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we will have the sessions in two times. Morning 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. for India. And it will be for US. Uh, evening 7.30 p.m the previous day that means today we are here on tuesday in india it will be evening 7 30 pm uh, in in us and again on tuesday morning the next day morning at 7 30 am will be for us so these are the two times the same program will be run and these programs will happen on tuesdays thursdays and saturdays so today is tuesday 17th 19th is the next session and so will be on 21st and likewise for 12 sessions we will will be together doing integrated wellness science and practice so uh, that's all from our side today